everyone i hope you have been well and today we continue with the vlog the vlogs i promised i was going to continue doing for these two months november and december and today um we continue with just vlogs on how my processes of making things and today i'm going to feature an overburst corset last time i did the waist cincher underburst corset so this time i'm doing an overburst corset and just show you the process of what i went through from the pattern to the sample to making the real thing and things i changed in the end and things i didn't like and yeah i'm going to show you all so i hope you'll be able to watch it to the end i hope you enjoyed the shopping tips i gave you and i hope they were actually useful thank you so much for the engagement i have gotten very very good support from all my social media platforms so i truly truly appreciate it and if you like short form content like that i am very much willing to do more of those in the future so let's get into it um the beginning is going to be just mainly the process of um using the pattern that i found making the sample making adjustment making the thing and just the different things i changed so i'm just going to let it run through so the video is not very long and then i guess i'll see you at the end let's do it So I got this pattern online and decided that I need to basically test it first. So this is the one that had the closest fit to my body. So these are the patterns. Of course you cut two of each so that you can create both the left and the right side. This is all front to back. So here is the sample. I used... Um, a cheaper fabric to create the sample and to my surprise it fit perfectly no alterations whatsoever so this was a very good pattern i'm very happy with it and i'm sure i'm going to use it for a lot of clients so now that this fits i can cut the satin fabric as for the strap um, i did cut a sample for the strap it drove me absolutely crazy because i'm alone and i'm doing this thing on my own so Fitting the strap is next to impossible without having a finished bustier top part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make my bustier and then I'm going to use this stra strap sample to pin it on my bustier when I'm wearing the dress and then cut the strap with the satin fabric that I'm going to put on the dress. So after sample, now I'm cutting on the fabric. I decided instead of a dress, I'll do a skirt and top. So I'm going to make a corset top and a long skirt. So the pieces are cut. I have cut the interfacing. I have cut the lining and the satin piece. So it's just about joining them together and then inserting the bones. So the satin piece also has um, there is a list I'm going to add on top, which I'll show you later. This is the front panels joined together, the satin, then the lining, and then the back pieces, both the satin and the lining. So I bought this list because I really like the pattern and it really goes with the satin color um, to put on top of the satin, especially for my bodies. And this is how it looks on top of the satin so the plan is to pin it in place to take the shape of the satin because i was avoiding to add seams on the list um i want the pattern not to be cut up so much so i'm going to pin it and then tack it and then show you because the goodness that it has some stretch so it will just mold onto the satin if it didn't have stretch then definitely cut it up into panels here is the pinned version I definitely would not recommend this method i personally just think it's better to cut it up into the panels because it has taken me so long and you can see um it's puckering a bit um that's the wrong side you have to really make sure you get into the curves especially the bust part so definitely recommend just cutting it up in panels the back was a bit easier because it's just two panels and the middle panel is a bit straight so yeah 
so these are the back pieces i want to put the eyelets so i've marked the spaces about an inch apart this is the wrong side um this is the right side so that's how it looks so i've stitched for the back boning channels they're just going to go through the lace as well um, I haven't joined it to the front. I just thought it would be easier to put the eyelets While it's still separate after I put the eyelets is when I will join them the front to the back again so yeah this is how it looks so this is how you insert the bones in the channel it automatically straightens as you do so here is the corset front side you can see I managed to put the lace without cutting it into panels back side the lace intact bunny ears everything so it's ready to be worn but I'm definitely adding more embellishments because it can stay like this I had to add some darts as an afterthought because it was gaping on my bust so I'll definitely adjust the pattern yeah but it's all done fits very well so this is the fit i haven't fully laced it completely but this is the fit you can see it fits very well in the back and it doesn't have any gaping here so i wore this dress like this to the wedding i thought i'd just show it to you so the off shoulder part you're seeing the sash was done in a rush it was very late i finished the dress very very late the day before the wedding so i didn't have time to really think through how i really wanted it to look or to do it neatly after the wedding and the ceremony and everything like that i really just was over that sash and i really didn't think i wanted to maintain it because i considered redoing it to make it fit better but i really just didn't like it i thought it just looked like every other off shoulder dress so the next part of this is basically how i ended up working on it and i was happy with the results So this is the fit, um, I'm just placing the flowers, um, the off shoulder part is exactly as I want, um, I don't know this one is a bit loose, I'll, I'll figure it out, but this is the effect I wanted, um, I placed the flowers um, not permanently yet, and my idea is actually just to add more and see how it looks, so that means a lot of Wearing, removing, wearing, removing, moving the flowers and all that. So that's just how it is. I'm thinking maybe I'll also add some here just to give it a bit more fullness because this is the effect basically that I was going for. So I hope it actually looks nice. Yeah. So as by my last fitting, this is what I settled on in terms of decoration i adjusted the strap that was disturbing me um i settled on this i have still pinned them in place so all this needs to be stitched down hand stitch some of them i've already stitched them here you can see so i need to stitch everything down i'm going to add probably more flowers on my shoulder shoulder strap i don't know just to give it more volume but i actually like how it looks i think it has come out very very well what do you guys think? You can see I do a lot with all these fittings and stuff. Yeah, it's always good to be sure before I recommend a design to a client and sometimes also just visualizing it, sometimes putting it in place really helps. But I really like the old 
beads that I've added it really brings out more because I actually intend to wear it with gold jewelry um, yeah so that's the final fit for this so this is the view of the corset that I'm working on um, these are the the flowers I'm adding um, there's some certain places I'm still going to add those um i guess i can give you a closer look of what it looks like these are the straps so that's what it looks like pinned this is when it's pinned down so i have to hand stitch all those um in place yeah so this is nylon thread I use it because it's sturdy um, you can't even cut it with your hand it's very sturdy so this is what I'm going to use to stitch down and then of course I have my needle um, I also check the quality of the needle it has to be a very strong needle doesn't rust um, I tend to just buy more expensive hand needles so I'm going to actually stitch down every single flower you can see that I stitch this down. I'm stitching it one point and another point, and then at least to secure it, I wear it again. See if I like it. If I don't, I probably undo it and then stitch it again. But I try as much as possible to just um, take it slowly, do it slowly because. There's no point of rushing it if you're going to repeat it and this is lace so i don't want to damage the lace because you can see this side is lined um they satin and then the lace is on top yeah so i guess i'll show you guys when i'm done So just an interjection right here I'm kind of showing you the final review but I just wanted to say that there is a difference between a bustier and a corset I know sometimes those are used interchangeably um, within the fashion world and the truth is the main difference is that a corset gives you reduction and a bustier does not a bustier does not have to give you reduction a corset and a bustier will both give you support in some way in a way that maybe you don't have to wear a bra but the main difference is that um, corset is usually very heavily boned and boned with either very strong steel bones or very strong plastic bones and they give you reduction a bustier can have a zip it doesn't have to have lacing but it doesn't give you reduction so I just wanted to be that just to make it clear because I know people confuse all that and sometimes um, if you come to me as a client and you say you want a corset the pricing is different because the process is different than making a bustier and sometimes corsets also have more panels and bustiers have less panels and sometimes you can actually use a bustier pattern to create a corset by helping it give the client reduction so I hope that is clear and I hope that helps so let's continue with the video so this is the final reveal of the whole outfit the corset and as you can see it fits pretty well with the off shoulder straps I personally find it a bit tight but I'm fine with it um, I'm not planning to really be lifting my hands very high but definitely it's something I can adjust because a lot of the flowers have been hand stitched so I can actually just add more flowers or just loosen some of them and it will be fine but that's the fit the skirt is a simple airline skirt I I just decided I'll just show it to you you don't have to see there's nothing dramatic or new there but that's it that's how it looks yeah fits very well I can bend I can squat can move that's the reveal hope you like it
before I forget, point of note about leasing. The way I advise my clients to lease is to lace it in a way that the bunny ears are at your waist. What are bunny ears? Bunny ears are the two loops. These two loops, um, I've undone mine. They're usually right there at the waist where you bend basically. And the point is that when you're lacing, it sh you should be able to pull and wear your corset on your own because you don't always have to help um, when you're wearing this corset. And if you pull it all the way at the bottom, it's very, very difficult to, to lace up. You'll need help, but if you have it on your waist, um, you can be able to do it yourself, as you can see even when I'm tightening it. And also the point of the excess is so that you can be able to pull pull this X, pull the next X, pull until you're satisfied with the fit. And I've said it before, corsets are supposed to fit you like a tight hug. They're not supposed to be too tight that you can't breathe. I personally do not advise on tight lacing. I advise on wearing corsets for support, not for tight lacing. And another thing is, you've noticed that there is a fabric here. Um, I usually make a modesty panel basically just so that um, your body is not seen and all that. Also just for comfort, sometimes it moves. But yeah, this is called a modesty panel. It's just supposed to cover up your back so that it's not visible. So I hope that is helpful and usually you can tie this in a bow or some people even tie them in front. I guess it depends on the design of the corset. Um, most of the time it's easier to lace a corset with an opening in front. Mine does not have an opening um, because generally um, you will lace it, you will zip it and then lace it. I'll do a demonstration on that at some point. But if you want to see how I wear and remove my waist cincha corset i have done a video on that it is on the youtube channel i'll put the link of that and it's also on my instagram page for the cinched by me amara page so i hope that would be helpful to you so i guess that's it so that's how the process of making this corset came about yes i'm seated so you can see it's very comfortable to sit in and yes I don't have to wear a bra with this. There is enough support, even with bending. And so I'm generally not a big fan of satin. So that's one of the reasons I really struggled um, making this and deciding what I wanted. It's also a reason why I bought the lace because I don't like the satin. And I just thought this gave it more of my signature with the flowers and everything. I would have done this um, for the wedding, but I did not have the time. So I was trying to look for something that could work and all that. Because if you've known me long enough or you followed my work, I tend to have these flowers in a lot of my work. Um, I used to make a lot of hair accessories with them. And sometimes I also put them up on clothes. So that's the gist of the process of making this corset. I hope you've learned a lot. If you have any questions, do let me know. Um, another thing is I can actually wear the corset with something else. I'm considering making another type of skirt for it. Also, I can wear it with jeans if I want to do it a bit casual if I want. Um, I guess I'll just see because um, it becomes a lot of trial and error, trial and, trial and error. But I know I don't have to limit myself to an evening look kind of so i hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something and i guess i'll see you next week bye